I'm here to talk about a special subject. How many people here do not like snakes? The only good snake is a dead snake. Honey, run, get the hoe. Or the shovel. You know, the hoe used to be a garden tool. Well, I specialize in people like you, and I kid you not, I'm cheaper than a shrink. I've had little old ladies who were afraid of snakes their whole life who ended up at the end of my show with a snake around their neck, grinning from ear to ear. And I mean the old lady, not the snake. <laughs> Stick with me, I'll start small. I'll start with the first question everybody always asks me, which is, of course, did you bring anything poisonous? Did you bring anything poisonous? I said I would start with that question. I did not say I would answer it yet. <laughs> Actually, about 10 years ago, there was a cobra loose under a building in Dallas. There was an idiot, I mean, an expert, <laughs> that they sent her to the building to go after it. <laughs> but no, it, what do we have that's venomous in Texas? Rattlesnakes, copperheads, right, water moccasins, and? Now, one of the ways you can tell that somebody is into snakes, they have a lot more pillowcases than they have pillows. We have rattlesnakes, copperheads, water moccasins, and... That is not a snake. Rattlesnakes, copperheads, water moccasins, and... Ah, I'm kidding. We have coral snakes. And fortunately for me, of course, this is not a coral snake. That's right, red and black, venom black, safe for Jack. Don't have an attack. Harmless little milk snake. Why they call him a milk snake? Don't try to milk it. No, there's no venom. <laughs> Anybody think he drinks milk? That's where he got his name. Farmers found him hanging out in the dairy barns with the milk cows, so they thought he was there to drink milk. You can imagine four of these attached to a cow like a milking machine. <laughs> Needle sharp teeth, imagine the cow standing still for this. No, they were there because there were mice and rats in the barn. It's a constrictor just like the big boas and pythons you're going to be meeting shortly. You know, everybody in Texas knows something about snakes and all of it's wrong. I'll give you an example. How many of you have ever seen a garden snake? Seen a garden snake? No such thing as a garden snake. And definitely no such thing as a gardener snake. What is that, a snake with a rake? You guys know what this is? What does a garter do? No, it does not guard things, no. Yeah, that's right. They used to wear stockings, and so they fell down before they invented nylon that stays up. Back when they wore these, the snake with the stripe down his back was named after this. It's called a garter snake. Snake in the garden is not a garden snake. A snake in the grass is not a grass snake. Unless you live in Europe, there's a grass snake all over Europe, but there's not one here. You see what I mean? Everybody knows something about snakes, and all of it's wrong. So, what's the first word that comes to your mind when I say the word boa? Yeah, well... Who said feather? Yeah, wrong neighborhood. <laughs> this one lives in the trees. He hangs out in the Amazon, so they call him, of course, an Amazon tree boa. Isn't he enormous? No, he's not. That's right, he hangs out looking like a vine. But if he figures out that you know that he's not a vine, sometimes he'll act like a venomous tree viper. <laughs> it helps to know how far he can reach. You see, he has no fangs, there are no, isn't he sweet? There are no, <laughs> there are no venomous boas, but all snakes have teeth. Four rows on top, two rows on bottom, they're needle sharp, they curve inward, they keep the food <laughs> from sliding back out. So if he bites my nose, which is clearly his goal in life. If I try to pull him off my nose, I'm digging the teeth in deeper. Now, do you guys know what tree boas are best at? You know what they're best at? Hanging on to the tree. <laughs> He's not gonna fall off the tree. Tree boas are afraid of falling. Think about it, you would be too if you lived in a tree and you had no arms and legs. <laughs> now the hard part is getting him off the tree. This is where I usually get bit and the crowd always loves it when that happens. Here we go, here, under here, under, ooh. In, off the, in, in, in the box. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I need the lid. In, in the box. Um, in, in, in the box. It's a reptile dysfunction.
This is the most likely snake that you see in your backyard here in Dallas or anywhere around here. Okay, he's a rat snake. What's good about rat snakes? They eat rats. One dead rat snake is 300 live rats in his lifetime. Think about that the next time dad grabs the shovel. All right, so here we go. Our own Texas rat snake. Oop. And he's holding his water dish. <laughs> now, if you see one of these in your yard, do not kill him. He will rattle his tail at you. He will hiss at you. He will strike at you, and it's all bluff. There's nothing this animal can do to you, even when he gets to be six feet long. Okay? If you see one in the trees, he's automatically harmless. Venomous snakes are not good climbers in this. Are you going to bite me? <laughs> Goodness gracious. So if you see one of these, I want you to do this. Leave him alone and call him George. George. <laughs> it's much harder to kill a snake once his name is George. And because of me, there are hundreds of snakes across this country named George. Get back in the box. Let's hear it for George. So, you want something bigger? Yeah. Oh, George left me a present. You guys down front are smelling it. One of the ways to avoid being eaten in the wild is to smell really bad. Ask any skunk. Texas rat snakes have a really well-developed musk gland. This is a python. You saw a snake that acted venomous to avoid being eaten. This one does something different. See if you can tell me, why do they call him a ball python? <laughs> Actually, right now he's more of a cinnamon roll python. <laughs> But that's because he's not really afraid of me. When they're afraid, they roll up into a tight little ball with their head in the middle, which makes him a popular pet because you basically can't get him to bite you unless you got a mouse in your hand. Which if you do, we call that an SFE, which is of course a stupid feeding error. <laughs> See, if you get close to his head, he pulls back. So he's very, very harmless. Would you like me to prove it? Yeah. I will need a volunteer. I need a girl, come here. I can barely see, sorry. Stand right here, please. Could you take your hat off and hold it? Perfect. Would you face this way? What is your name? Angel. Angel, everybody say goodbye to Angel. Angel, your job is remain extremely still and remember that you volunteered for this. You see, Angel will now model the latest in living fashion. And ladies, I'm here to tell you that accessories that do not move are so last year. You see, ball pythons are so gentle, you can just sort of wear them. Now, it's okay if she turns a little red, just let me know when she starts to turn blue. <laughs> but if you're wearing ball pythons, hold really still, Angel, because you do not want to forget the proper headwear. <laughs> now, is this a fashion statement or what? <laughs> not recommended for office wear. Everybody give her a hand. She was very brave. <laughs> this is interesting trying to do 45 minutes in 10, 15. So here we go. I actually use a couple of things that would seem unrelated to my topic to help tell the story. Because part of it is I've discovered that if you want people to learn stuff, if they're having too much fun to notice, they learn more. One of the things I sometimes use to get that point across is magic. Now, if you love magic, you gotta love the classics. Now, I'm sorry if you're expecting a bunny, they're all at home in my freezer. <laughs> yeah, one of the reasons I'm single. Very, very single. Oop. You know, yes, it's empty. You want to see me pull a snake out of it? Yeah. You want me? Okay. Now to do this, of course, any magician will need his trusty magic wand. Watch the hat, watch the hat. <laughs> yeah, you don't see that every day. Who can tell me what do you call a snake with legs? 
a politician. <laughs> Especially in Texas. No, another good answer would be lizard. And this is a lizard. But he is not an iguana. He is not a Komodo dragon. And he is certainly not some gecko who's constantly going on about saving you hundreds on insurance. <laughs> no, he's from Argentina. He's a black and white tegu, and his name is Capone. <laughs> that is a lizard. Isn't he awesome? Yeah. And isn't he handsome? Those big cheeks are where he stores fat. He stores a lot of it during the wintertime because that's summertime in Argentina. During our summer, he spends most of his time asleep under my bed. Probably another reason I'm single. You know, they say nice guys finish last. Nice guys with a van full of snakes finish after them. He goes at two speeds, slow and stop. When he's hungry, he marches out into my kitchen and stares at my refrigerator. <laughs> and here is his favorite spot to be scratched. Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. <laughs> and you know what else? He's a big baby. Let's hear it for Capone! Yeah. Do you want something even bigger? The show gets heavier every year. Why did the anaconda cross the road? To swallow a famous chicken. And you do know why that original chicken really crossed that original road? To prove to the possum and the armadillo that it could be done. Anybody know where Myanmar is? Yes. Southeast Asia, what did it used to be called? Burma. Burma, from Burma I give you the Burmese python, but even if you went to the jungles of Burma, you would never find this snake. Do you know why? Because he's right here. <laughs> no, there's another reason. You would never even find one that looks like him because he never would have grown to be this big. This is a genetic mistake. This is amelanistic. This is lousy camouflage. <laughs> That's right, where are you going to hide in the jungle when you look like this? I always get banana tree, and I'm like, you ever seen a 12-foot banana? Actually, this is nowhere near as gorgeous as she's going to be in about a week because she's about to shed her skin. So that brilliant lemon yellow that she usually is, is sort of dulled out by the fact that the old skin is going to come off. She'll climb out of it like a great big sock. Her name is Evie. That's right, something seemed appropriate about a large female serpent named Eve. And she's a total sweetheart. In fact, I think after everything's over, if you want to meet her, I'll let you. The reason I do this, when I was seven years old, I found a little speckled king snake in my great-grandmother's backyard. He's beautiful, little speckled, br brilliant black with little yellow stars down his back, and he climbed around my finger and he wrapped around my heart. And a few minutes later, I killed him. I didn't mean to, I put him in a little jar with the holes in the top and I left him in the car for just a few minutes in Jackson, Mississippi. I fried him. And I have been making it up to that one snake ever since. I'm not kidding. Everywhere I go, I say, you were ready to kill a snake yesterday if you saw a snake in the yard and you had a shovel. Tomorrow you won't. And how many hands do I get? You see what I mean? That's why I do this. I'm actually here to say, don't kill anything. You know you don't have to kill fire ants? You can spread dry molasses, like fertilizer, which it is. Makes the soil happy. Doesn't even kill the ants. They just hate it. So they move into your neighbor's yard where they belong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Daryl Sprout.